I'm delivering this sermon primarily with those of you who will not be able to be in Shul for Yom Kippur in mind. To you and indeed to everyone, I wish a Shana Tova. We are nothing and God is everything. Yes, we are nothing. When this pandemic started, human productivity was at an all-time high. We were living in a sophisticated, unprecedented, creative 21st century when people thought that we are everything, but we're nothing. In the midst of this pandemic, regardless of who we might be, from world leaders, the most renowned individuals down, we have needed to retreat into our homes. Every one of us, and nobody's immune from this, has been fearing an invisible enemy. Our lives are on the line, and we haven't yet got a solution to this crisis. In our Yom Kippur prayers, we will cry out to God and we will say, Hallo kol ha-giborim ka'ayn lefanecha. Are not all the mighty people like nothing before you? Ve'anshe Hashem kelo hayu, and the renowned, famous, celebrities, as if they have never existed. Vachachamim kivli mada, and all the clever people, as if they've learnt nothing. Unavonim kivli haskel, and people who usually know everything, Right now, they know nothing. And you, God, you are everything. Rabbi Simcha Bonim of Peshischa used to carry with him two pieces of paper, one in each one of two pockets. On one piece of paper, he had written the words from the book of Breshit, V'anochi afar va'efer, I am but dust and ashes, the words of Avram before God. Avram was saying to Hashem, God, I am nothing. And that indeed is the way that we feel right now. But Reb Simcha Bonim had another piece of paper, and on that he wrote the words from the Mishnah. In Masechet Sanhedrin, Bishvili nivra haolam, this world has been created for me. There the Mishnah poses the following question. Why is it that originally there was just one human being? Surely it would have been wonderful had God created the first human couple, or perhaps the first family, maybe the first community, perhaps the first nation. Why the first person? And one of the answers of the Mishnah is, Adam was unique. And when he was alive by himself, the entire world existed just for his sake. Similarly, each and every one of us is as unique as Adam was. And therefore, like him, we should be saying, This world has been created for me. It's not a statement of self-importance, but rather an appreciation of potential, of the opportunities that Hashem places us and the impact that each and every one of us can make. And isn't that also exactly what we have achieved during the past half year? Extraordinary achievements. People have been absolutely wonderful. Countless key workers who've been putting their own lives on the line in order to save and protect the lives of others. So many people whose simchas have been cancelled Individuals who tragically have passed away by themselves and families who've been separated from their loved ones during those very sad moments. Tiny funerals with so many family members not able to attend. Shivers which haven't been shivers. University students and school pupils who haven't been able to write exams. Whose futures, whose careers are in doubt. People who've been made redundant. They don't know. What's going to happen with their future parnosa? And then so many of us who would just love to hug our children 
and our grandchildren, but we've been physically separated from them. These are but a few examples of so many challenging situations, but so many extraordinary people who haven't been complaining because they've understood the need of the hour. And within this context, our communities have been absolutely remarkable. Having never been taught how to face a situation such as this, which is totally unprecedented, our rabbis and rabbisons have led from the front. Their pastoral connections have been wonderful. Their creativity, absolutely marvelous. Our synagogue leaders have been truly wonderful. We have proven that communities go well beyond a building. Communities are all about people, and people are incredible. You are incredible. And right at the heart of all of our achievements has been action activity, productivity, creativity, it's all centered around action. You know, during the past six months, there is one verse from Tanakh that I've thought of more than any others. It's a verse from the book of Mishle, Proverbs, which we recite in our prayers every morning. Rabot machshavot b'lev ish ve'atzat Hashem hitaku. Many are the thoughts in the heart of a person but it is the will of God which prevails. And how true this is. Rabbot Machshavot. So many thoughts, so many intentions. Just look at what was written in our diaries way back in February. Our intentions for Pesach, our plans for Shavuot, details of our holidays during the summer, meetings, simchas, events, dinners, Intentions to socialize with others all swept clear from our diaries. Rabbot Machshavot, those were our intentions. Vatsat Hashem, it is the will of God which has prevailed. Rabbi Shlomo Volbe of the Ber Yaakov Yeshiva in Israel gave a beautiful, different parish to this verse. This is what he said. Rabbot Machshavot Plevish. In times of crisis, many are the thoughts that people have sometimes positive thoughts and sometimes dark thoughts, sometimes thoughts through which they philosophize what's happening, sometimes plans, visions, strategies, all in their minds. But what is the answer of God? What is Hashem's advice to us during a period of crisis such as this? Takum, get up, do something. Yes, Rabot Machshavot, you can have many thoughts, but it is action that counts. As we sing in Anim's Mirod, Vayeshavucha lefi ma'asecha. Your value is in what you do, not in what you think. There was an occasion when Hashem gave this message to none other than Moshe Rabbeinu. The Israelites were caught between the Egyptians and the deep blue sea. What were they going to do? How were they going to survive? So Moshe did what came naturally to him, what all of us would have done. He prostrated himself on the ground and he cried out to God in prayer. And in the book of Shemot we read, Vayomer Hashem o Moshe, the Lord said to Moses, Ma tizakelai. Why are you crying out to me? Speak to the Israelites. Let them travel. Do something. Hashem was saying to Moshe, Takum, get up. This is not a time for prayer. This is a time for action. And Moshe shared this message with the nation. Nachshon, the son of Aminadav of the tribe of Judah, heard it. He took his famous leap of faith into the waters the nation followed him and the rest as they say is all history moshe remembered this lesson where we read in parashat ba'alotcha how his sister miriam was mitzorat kashalik she was so ill from leprosy it was as if she was about to die moshe prayed the shortest prayer on record kel na rafana la god please heal her please and why such a short prayer because he remembered, yes, I must pray to Hashem, but Hashem also wants me 
to do something for my sister, to give her chizuk, her encouragement, to find the best possible medical attention for her. I have to be a partner of Hashem. And that is a message which is so relevant for all of us right now. Over Yom HaKippurim, we'll be crying out in prayer to Hashem. Zochreinu l'chayim, melech hafez b'chayim. Remember us for life, O King who delights in life. We'll be davening from the depths of our hearts. And with tears in our eyes in the Notan of prayer, we will say, Umi ba who, God forbid, will die during the coming year as a result of plague. And at the same time, Hashem is turning to us and he's calling upon us to play our part, to be his partners. Hashem is saying to all of humankind, what's happening with the vaccine? What are you doing with your creativity and your ability to provide suitable medication to counteract the impact of the virus? How responsible are you as individuals and as families with regard to your own health? How responsible are you being with regard to the health of others? It's a partnership, says Hashem. Yes, please pray. I want you to turn to me, but I also want you to play your responsible role so that together we can get through this. So over this Yom HaKippurim, let each and every one of us remember, we are nothing. Let us also appreciate the ability, the potential that we have. Let's make our mark on our environment and contribute in a marvelously positive way to our society at this time. Over Yom Kippurim, whether in shul or at home, let's pour our hearts out in prayer to Hashem, asking Him to bless us in the coming year with life. And let us recognize as well that Hashem is turning to us to play our part as His partner. And together we can get through this and we will get through this. The light can be seen at the end of this tunnel. And please God, we will emerge into post-COVID times to be able to press a reset button and to be strengthened and empowered to face an exciting and wonderful future. May this happen as speedily as possible. I wish each and every one of you a peaceful, successful, happy, fulfilling, and most importantly of all, healthy New Year.